For us, etc., and in the middle of all of this, Allah Ta'ala He says, Oh, you who believe, be upright with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be honest in your speech, be honest in your testimony, be honest in your witnessing, and do not let the negative ways of other people influence you for you to be negative, but rather be just. This is closer to taqwa. Have taqwa, Allah Ta'ala indeed is over what you do, all know. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala gives us this, it's like a, a life lesson. You see people outside, they lie, they steal, they cheat, they deceive, and maybe, maybe it comes across one's mind, well, why don't I do the same? They steal, why can't I steal? You know, they fudge this, why can't I fudge that? They're dishonest, what's wrong? Everyone does it. How else can I get advanced? How else can I advance? And you start telling yourself, well, if everyone is bad, then that's just the new normal. But Allah Ta'ala, He gives us this lesson and He reminds us, He says, do not let that influence you. Influence you. Don't let the unjust ways of people influence you, you have to be just. And that's the difference between Islam and other systems and other ways of living, is that our standard is higher. Why? In Allah, Allah knows what you are doing. And that's why belief is important to us. And that's why belief in the hereafter is a fundamental part of our belief system. Because if we did not believe that we were going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then yeah, we can do whatever we want. But we know that it's not just this dunya. It's this dunya is a little bit, and then we are going to be taken to account. And because we believe in that, Allah Ta'ala is reminding us, be just. Just because someone out there is not just with you, it does not, it's not an excuse for you to be unjust. Now, somebody might say, 
oh, this is a, a naive way of thinking. This is a weak way of thinking. <laughs> yeah, but we're not interested in power. That's not our way. With tilka al-ayyamu dawinu habaynanas, Allah Ta'ala says power, Allah alternates between people. Yu'ti al-mulka min yasha' wa yanzi'u al-mulka min man yasha' Allah gives power to whom he wants and he yanks it. Naza'a, he takes it away. The way you take the rug from underneath, so Allah takes that away from people. How many uh, dynasties and how many systems of government and how many monarchies and how many empires in the past have crumbled, Muslim and non-Muslim have crumbled. So when people say, oh, but you're being naive, it's not that we're being naive, but we're not concerned with power, we're concerned with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one that is teaching us. And by Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us this dunya, it's nothing for us. We're not going to compromise our beliefs because of this dunya. So other people that are consumed with power, that are consumed with wealth, that are consumed with these, um, these aspects of the world around them, they see this advice as weak. But that's because who are they a slave to? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, حُبُّكَ لِشَيْءِ يُعْمِ that your love of something will blind you and will poison you. It's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when people say, oh, this is uh, naive, or even if you think to yourself, oh, this is naive, check yourself, check what that, what, what's consuming you to say that. Because this is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't let their ways be your ways. They are not your teacher. Omar al-Muhtar, radiallahu anhu, the famous Libyan uh, freedom fighter, when he fought, you know, he waged legitimate jihad against the Italians in Libya. And ultimately he was captured, ultimately he was hung. But his, his people, his troops, wanted to desecrate the bodies of the Libyan uh, uh, soldiers that they had captured. And then all of them we said, we can't do that, it's haram. They said, but they do that to us. And he said, yeah, but they're not our teachers. Who are our teachers? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That's not our way, we can't do that. We can't stoop to that, we can't go there. And I didn't be just, this is closer to taqwa. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala sees what we're doing. So this uh, verse is very significant, not only because, it, like I said in the beginning, it falls in this conversation of Ahlul Kitab, but it also is a universal principle for us, that we cannot compromise our ways. And this is one of the secrets of Islam's success, is that we are always reminded that we have a higher standard. And because of that, we are, and we live to that higher standard, inshallah, that's when people start to pay attention. The Prophet sallallahu he was not um, uh, fearful that he was gonna go uh, needy or he was going to need or anything. He didn't, he was not scared, so he would give. He never, one of the Prophet sallallahu traits is he never said no to anyone who asked for something. He would give and he would give and he would give and the Quraysh said, he gives as if he's like, you know, maybe there's a secret we don't know about. How, where, where, where's he getting all this stuff from? He keeps giving and giving and giving. Right? Because he's just. Because his heart is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If his heart was connected to the dunya, he would count what he's giving. He's like, oh, let me log that into my Excel sheet. Oh, I gave you 100 dinar. Oh, I gave you 50. And he would, he would be counting like that. We live like that because we're human. But that's not how the Prophet lived. He gave and he gave and he gave. And because he gave, he was always in increase. In if you are grateful, Allah will give you increase. So remember what your ma'yar uh, is, what your measuring stick is. For us, our measuring stick is to be just is to remember that what we say, Allah Ta'ala is seeing it. What we feel, Allah Ta'ala knows it. How we act, Allah Ta'ala sees it. All of this is being recorded for us. 
Be just, this is the way of taqwa. That's our way. I'm not going to let police brutality make me brutal to the police. I'm not going to let people that lie and steal and cheat cause me to lie and steal and cheat. We're not going to succumb to that. That is not our way. And that is why people need us. People need us to be on our A game. We have to be A game Muslims. We can't just be B and C game Muslims. Who else is saying this? Who else out there talks like this? Show me one person, one thinker, one school of thought that is saying this. I said, I'm not saying this. I mean that the Quran is saying, who is teaching this? That we have to have a higher standard and showing a way for us to have this higher standard. We are the only people left. We are the only people left talking about this. So this is an opportunity for us to ask ourselves, is that my standard? To be just, to be honest, or do I cave in? Okay, just a couple of announcements before we resume. So we have, Two uh, deaths in the communi community. Uh, Zinat Jahan Amin, the aunt of Uman, passed away in Dhaka today. Suwayda uh, uh, Mustafa Kamal Pasha, the uncle of the team family, who passed away also in Bangladesh. And also, this reminds me that um, some of you may have heard or you may have not have heard, but yesterday, right after, as a matter of fact, when we finished the prayer, I received news that uh, our brother uh, in Princeton, New Jersey, uh, Brother Suhaib Sultan, who was the Muslim chaplain uh, of uh, Princeton, he had passed away. Yeah, he is, was struggling with cancer for the last year or so. Uh, he's young, he was younger than me, and uh, he passed away, uh, and uh, so for him and for the, the people of our community, we ask Allah Ta'ala's maghfirah, inshallah for all of them, may Allah Ta'ala make their passing easy, enlighten their graves, expand their graves to resurrect them with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In this blessed month, we remember them and all of those who have passed before us, inshallah, may Allah ta'ala have maghfirah and mercy upon all of them.